recording started. Hi, everyone, and welcome. You are in Illuminate, and Illuminate is a, an interactive environment, so we hope that you'll have some fun here. Uh, you can see in the uh, first area, uh, participant window. You can see the other participants who are in the show. And below that window, you have some different ways of expressing yourself. There are some emoticons that allow you to do a smiley face, or a clapping hand, a confused look, or a thumbs down. We didn't expect many of those. You'll also see that there's a hand with a green arrow up. If they decide to take questions from the audience, then you can use that to indicate that you'd like to talk through your microphone to speak. Um, below the participants window is the chat area. You can leave chat messages for the group as a whole. You can also send uh, chat messages to other individuals in the chat. You'll notice there's a drop-down box for that. But do be aware that we see all of those chat messages, those of us who are moderators. It does help to keep the chat relevant to the actual show tonight. Uh, it's hard to follow that chat if there's a lot of uh, sort of back chatter that's not related to the show. So we appreciate your keeping it on topic. Um, and if you do take the microphone, you'll see that there's a larger audio microphone button down at the bottom that you would click, and we'll walk you through that if that's the case at the time. I'm going to give you the capability to modify the whiteboard now, and you'll see the map. And to the left of the map, you should see a wand with a red star at the end. And if you click on that red star, the, the wand with the red star, and then click on the map, you can let us know where you're listening from. It's also fun to shout it out in the chat. Maybe put the time and the temperature and the weather where you are. Click on the wand. That's pretty neat. A very North America-centric audience tonight, Dr. Gates? Yeah, check it out. <clears throat> Looking good. A lot of dots on there. Looks like the AT&T map <laughs> yeah. in the commercials. <laughs> That's very funny. You watching the Olympic ads. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a TV junkie. I am in Harvard Square. Boom. There you go. Okay, and I am now going to nice. take this to a map just of the United States, and you can do the exact same thing. We'll get a little bit more detail. Just click again on the map. Click on the wand. Well, yeah, well the wand should still be at there, and you just click over on the map. Hawaii and Alaska are there. What do the big stars mean? It just means somebody who's a pro like went down and modified their star to make it larger. Uh, I like this. Will we get will we get our lineage tonight? <laughs> can all these people hear me? They can. You are live. Huh? You are live. Oh, good. I can't hear them though. No, well, none, none of them. I can't other hear than, them. No one else is speaking yet. Okay, you can well. see them in the chat window, though. Oh, I am. I'm. I'm talking. We can hear you. Yeah, <laughs> that's nice. Okay, Jenny. I think we're good. good. Let's see. Great. Next, turn it back to you, and we'll look forward to a great evening. Terrific. Okay. Um, before we launch in, I was asked to say to all of you wonderful innovative educators out there that we at PBS have just launched a program where we really want to celebrate people who are doing innovative things in education. So we have an awards program where the winners will be invited to our premier annual event in Austin, Texas to uh, meet our producers and see sneak pe previews of upcoming programs. Uh, folks who win will also get a free online professional development course. So I um, really encourage you to visit the PBS Teachers site. The link is there on this slide, and I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you again later in the event. And um, let us know what you're doing to, um, to innovate in the classroom and how you're engaging your students. Okay, so as I said, tonight we are joined by Dr. Henry Louis Gates, Jr. We are going to be talking about his latest program the Faces of America. And um, if you have not seen it, I, I strongly encourage you all to tune in. Um, check with your local stations. It's been airing on a lot of local stations the last couple of weeks, but you can also watch the whole program online, and we'll be showing you later on tonight how you can do that. 
for those of you who don't already know Dr. Gates, he is the Alphonse Fletcher University Professor and the Director of the W.E.B. Du Bois Institute for African and African American Research at Harvard University. His most recent book is In Search of Our Roots, which expands on interviews he conducted for his critically acclaimed multi-part PBS documentary series, African American Lives 1 and 2, and Faces of America is really an extension of that series. His most recent documentary prior to Faces of America was Looking for Lincoln, and he's the author of Lincoln on Race and Slavery. As an influ influential cultural critic, Professor Gates has written for Time Magazine, The New Yorker, and The New York Times. He's the editor of several anthologies, including the Norton Anthology of African American Literature. So it's a real honor to have him with us tonight. Just a quick overview of tonight's agenda. Uh, we're going to have Dr. Gates speaking to us about the film. We'll start with a quick clip from the film so that those of you who haven't seen any of it will we'll get a taste of what it's all about. Um, then I have lots of questions for Dr. Gates, so I'm going to ask him a few of them that I think will um, be of interest to everybody, and then we'll open it up for you to ask him all of your burning questions. And then we'll turn it over to Janice to share with us some educational resources that have been created specifically for teachers to help you use the film in the classroom, and then we'll wrap it up. So throughout the event, please feel free to use the chat window to um, ask questions, make comments. Um, as you'll see, Dr. Gates is already typing away in there, so um, you don't have to wait to, to ask your questions. Please you know, jump right in. So I'm going to go ahead and um, open up a window and, and get this clip going for us. It's going to take me just a second. And what we're going to be watching is actually wow, this is fantastic, man. the first man. couple um, the first couple minutes of the first episode, which I think does a really great job of setting up the series. So this is the Faces of America website that you're seeing here. I'm going to just put that URL right in the chat window. Um, before we, we go any further, let me just say to everyone, because the question is always asked, will this be recorded? Yes, it will. So you'll get full, we'll have full recordings of tonight's event. Um, and a transcript of the chat and um, and of the whole event for you that we post on the PBS Teachers and uh, and Classroom 2.0 site so that after tonight you can go back and easily find all of the links that we've shown you so that you can uh, revisit these and, and watch the video and, and explore the site in much more detail on your own time. So when I um, click on this link here, um, this video should start automatically playing on your machine. As I said, we're only going to watch the first five minutes, so a timer is going to time out after after that so that we can jump right into the interview. If you have any questions uh, about you know, audio on your end, try checking the, the volume on your own machine. Um, and if you have any problems watching the video, I apologize, but uh, we're, we're giving you the URL so you can always go back and watch it on your own time. So without further ado, here's an intro to Faces of America. And you might need to scroll down to see it. It's my dad. Quilt of all the world's cultures, religions, and colors. 
It's a quilt made up of stories about family. Family struggling to find a place of their own, to build a better life, to become Americans. What if we were to follow those individual threads backwards in time? What would they reveal? How would it change the way we look at ourselves? The people who I share the common ancestry with, I don't ever think about, but now I will. And it's like a willow tree. And they go all the way around me, and you're hmm. like, I feel like surrounded by other people now. Hmm. Beautiful image. I have never seen this. We're so ignorant of our back history. You know, we're very busy with our own lives. We are the sum of all the people that have lived before us. How extraordinarily liberating it is to have another way of thinking about yourself. You don't even know how many people are part of your distant family tree going back thousands of years. You don't really open your mind up to that, I think, until you really see it. I'm Henry Louis Gates, Jr. Since the day that my grandfather was buried, I've been searching for my roots. Along the way, I've discovered some surprises. I have more white ancestors than black, and I am directly descended from my great-grandfather. Now I'm going to trace the family. People who have made a real cultural impact on our nation. We're going back to their ancestors' countries of origin to see what surprises we can find. From a remote village in China to the copper mines of Montana, from the banks of the Rio Grande to the rolling hills of Ireland, I'll search in every nook and cranny to reconstruct their family history. I collected stories, documents, and records and bound them into a book of life for each of my guests. It says a Palatine shipping. <laughs> it's true. And when the paper trail runs out, I'll turn to DNA. I can connect. No. No. Really? So you bring family together. Did you try and think? You knew there was royalty somewhere? <laughs> oh, tell me. Okay, turn the page. <laughs> we'll start with their births in the 20th century, then carefully work our way back through the branches of their family trees. We'll see how the great events of world history interacted with their family's personal history to shape who they are today. Powerful. Yeah, have you ever seen these documents from the No. You know how lucky you are that you can see this stuff? Oh. I am so envious. <laughs> Each of their narratives is unique. The fundamental story that they tell belongs to all of us who call ourselves Americans. Nice. So that's it, guys. So that's it. Um, I love to see all the chat in the window. Um, People are obviously having a good time in there. (laughs) So I guess my my first question for you um, is, is, you know, why did you want to do this this project and not um, African American Lives 3? Sort of, how did you decide to expand it to this larger group? Um, well, we did African American Lives 1 and 2, and they were very successful. And I felt that um, we had done that genre, and we had done it very well. So it was time to do something new. What's the logical next step? Um, do you want to repeat yourself forever or do you want to expand? And um, the reason I did it was because a lady who was um, said that she was of Russian Jewish extraction wrote to me and said, why should black people have all the fun? <laughs> why don't you do someone like me? And, you know, I thought about that and I thought, wow, you know, I could be like, take the Noah's Ark approach to Jewish people, to Muslims, to <laughs> Latinos. <laughs> and that's what I tried to do. And, and the result is Faces of America. It was the right thing to do. 
I just taped Oprah on Friday. It will be on in March. And um, um, it was clear that it was the logical next step. It's what I should do. What do you guys think? Do you think yeah. I should have done live right. three? Well, or I mean, the, the stories are really the interesting. World. And they give us... Um, uh, No, I think this, well, I mean, I think, you know, live three could have been, I mean, I think you could have done live three and four and five and six because those were, as you say, really successful and really, really interesting programs. But you know, I'm very glad to see that you've expanded it because I think, you know, there are, these are different kinds of stories. And one of the things that I found most interesting in watching it is um, I'm fascinated by your research process and what that must involve because, um, I mean, you've got two totally different types of research. You've got the genealogy and you've got the genetics. And I, I thought what was interesting was um, that you see that there are really different um, ways that different cultures have of retaining or not retaining um, their records. And can you talk to that a little bit, sort of what you learned about how the research was different this time around? Yeah, you know, I have to say I'm reading all the comments, so I wasn't listening. I mean, the comments are coming so quickly. <laughs> the, um, the To the person who, you know, we have a, a person who loves black history in there and says, give me live three, give me live three. I love it. Um, to that person, we're going to do a live three, um, but uh, God willing. But I just thought it was, it's good if you start with something that's black and that the whole world can embrace, and then you share it with them. That's good for race relations. That's good for um, our sense of cultural diversity and that we are one people, members of a common civilization. So that's why I did it. But don't worry, my, you know, I haven't given up my appointment as the director of the Du Bois Institute for African and African American Research. <laughs> but it's, um, it's a generous thing to do. Now, what was your question again? I'm sorry. No problem. Um, my question was about the research process because I thought one of the things that was interesting is it seems like um, you learned a lot about how different cultures choose to continue, choose to record or to stop recording um, genealogy, and I was hoping you could sort of speak to that a little bit, sort of what it was like to try to uncover these different kinds of stories from different cultures. Well, we use um, Johnny Cerny, J-O-H-N-I, Cerny, C-E-R-N-Y, is our principal. She's the queen of genealogy for me. She's out in Provo, Utah. Uh, she's not a Mormon herself, but she you know, works with the Mormons out there because they are the, um, the fundament of, of genealogy. And then we engage the services of local genealogists, so for Queen Noor, we hired geneal a genealogist in Syria and for Malcolm Gladwell and Elizabeth Alexander, genealogist in Jamaica, uh, Dr. Oz, genealogist in Turkey, Yo-Yo, genealogist in China. So, you know, we have um, a person sort of working at central headquarters and then a person out in the field. And the reason to do that, even in my case, it was important to do that. Now, I'm from eastern West Virginia, which was western Virginia until... 19, uh, I'm sorry, 1863. Using uh, computers, Johnny Cerny could find on my mother's mother's line my ancestors back to my third great grandmother and great grandfather. These are all black people. Um, but then when we hired Jane Ailes to go into the courthouse in Hardy County, West Virginia, she found my fourth great grandparents. So you see, that's how it works. Certain things have been digitized, a lot of things have been digitized, but a lot of things haven't. So you have to use that double prong uh, approach. So essentially, we use exactly the same methodology for these people as we did for the people in Lives 1 and Lives 2, except we had to send them to other countries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it wasn't a matter of sending them to Alabama, Mississippi, and West Virginia. It was a matter of sending them to China, to Turkey, to Syria, to Germany, to uh, Russia. 
um, right. et cetera. Well, I thought what was sort of interesting is you talk about, someone asks you, you know, was it more or less, I, maybe this is an interview I was reading, someone asked, was it more or less difficult to do this research? And you said, well, in some ways, nothing's more difficult than researching African American history because people aren't recorded with their names. So, um, you know, it, it was black male or 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 male 34 or whatever. Um, but then I, I believe in this series, um, you also talk about how there were certain cultures where after like 75 years, they would just erase all of the records. Is that right? Am I remembering that correctly? Yeah, Japan to the <laughs> to this day, 75 years. And later, <laughs> they destroy your records. Isn't that amazing? You know what that reminds me of? The Igbo people, I, IGBO, in eastern Nigeria, and the Yoruba people, Y-O-R-U-B-A, in western Nigeria. Here's the difference. The Yoruba people deify twins, and they have the highest incidence of twinning in the whole world. More twins per capita than any people in the whole world, because twinning is genetic. You know how the, Yoruba, uh, the Igbo people feel about twins? Traditionally, they would kill twins. Now, that's what we see in, in with the Mormons, save everything. With the Japanese, destroy the records to ensure privacy after 75 years. Isn't that fascinating? You know, I'm not making a literal comparison, a literal analogy. I'm just saying that different cultures, in different cultures, concept of memory, um, which is, when you think about genealogy, what is genealogy but memory? familial memory. That is um, a thing to be valued forever in some cultures and in other cultures it's a thing to be protected um, and destroyed. So it's just fascinating. I say thank God for the Mormons myself because I want all of these um, records to be preserved. Right, absolutely. <laughs> Steve says you're welcome as a Mormon. Um, yeah, I, I think it's, I think it, it's it's totally oh, fascinating good. that um, that the, that cultures would would. I like this. I like this. No, Aunt, I. I'm sorry, Aunt, Aunt Mamie or what? Aunt Tammy says, "Do you plant plant yeah, vanilla I know, I people?" That. I'm Danish. Yeah, I guess you know Jenny one of the, says, one of my other yeah, questions. Yeah, Meryl Streep turns out to be very vanilla. Right? <laughs> Um, one of my questions, and then I'll, you know, let let um, some of these folks sort of jump in because they obviously have lots of their own. Is, um, you know, I'm struck by watching the series by how many of um, your guests sort of talk about how little they knew about their own history, and and it seems like, you know, it was this this wonderful. I mean, they, uh, several of them say this is such a gift that you've given them, and and you know, personally, I would. I, I mean, that that scrapbook is so beautiful, and it would be it would be an, an incredible gift to receive it. But um, I'm wondering, you know, I think we there's lots of chat in the window, people talking about how important knowing our family is to our sense of identity, and yet I think one of the things we discover through the series is how little so much of us do know. And I'm I, and I'm just curious your thoughts on why we know so little and do you think that it says something about us as Americans? Do you think that is a generational thing? Do you think that'll change? Well, I think in this series we had 12 guests and the only person who knew a fair amount about her family was Eva Longoria who, by the way, in addition to being, you know, remarkably charming person is um, astonishingly intelligent. She's getting a master's degree in Chicano studies right. out in California while she does Desperate Housewives, which uh, I didn't know about. No, Maybe you no all idea. did. Um, but she's very subtle. Has a very Yeah, she has a very subtle mind. And she says, alone of the 12 guests, that her family kept the family tree, you know, in their house. But we took her back further than she ever dreamed, back to her 11th great-grandfather who was born in Astoria, Spain in 1525. Oprah asked me this on uh, Friday when we taped the show, and I said, uh, most people who came to America were fleeing something. They were fleeing poverty or persecution, political persecution or religious persecution or, you know, terrible, terrible living conditions, uh, oppression from the czar or, you know, some Kaiser somewhere. And they don't want to remember all that stuff. 
you know, they were they were coming here hoping that the ocean voyage would create a tabula rasa, a clean slate, so they could inscribe a new identity on the American blackboard. Um, and so, you know, they just put the past out of their minds. They tried to. But there's a saying that what the grandparents forget, uh, the grandchildren remember. You know, after a certain point, people want to know what their roots are. Um, and that's a good and healthy thing. And the popularity of African-American lives and the popularity of and by the way, for the person who keeps saying do lives three in the chat window, it's all these, you know, not in African American lives was so interesting to non black people. It wasn't just um, a black thing, as we say. Everybody was fascinated by the discovery of roots, and that's why that lady wrote to me and said, How about me? You know, how about me? We can't, we can't find. Uh, our people, Russian Jewish people didn't even have surnames, just like slaves didn't for a very long time until the Tsar needed more taxation and needed to conscript more men into the army. So he forced them to have surnames, last names. So the problems that we face of uh, the absence of memory, the lack of memory, the lack of records, are really shared by a lot of people around the world. And I think that's why um, African American lives first, <clears throat> and now Faces of America have proven to be so popular. Yeah, it's interesting to think about. You know, when uh, you were our first ever webinar guest, and then the guest we had after you um, was talking all about sort of this generation of digital kids and how all of them are amassing these digital dossiers where everything they do is being recorded. And so it's really interesting to think. You know, a hundred years from now, will we all have? so many more records about who we are, you know, will this process become in a way a lot easier because of technology over time? Yes, and the answer is it's easier now than it was five years ago. Go to Ancestry.com, you have to pay a monthly subscription, um, you can do it by the month and then type in the name of one of your ancestors and it will automatically connect you to any document with that person's name. That didn't exist five years ago, yeah, that's amazing. It is. So, um, so folks, I'm going to turn it over now. I mean, so, I, yeah, and eventually, oh well, eventually, virtually all records will be digitized. Now, I mean, who knows what percentage? Quite a lot have been, but you know, eventually you'll be able to do what we have to send people to China to do. You'll be able to do right here uh, on your computer, just as we all are today, this evening, and that's. Uh, that's astonishing too. Is there anyone who, I'm curious, is there anyone among our participants who thinks that resurrecting one's family's past is a bad thing? I see a lot of no's. <laughs> oh yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> My teenage son. No, it could, could be. Becky, Becky's going to venture that it could be. Preaching to the choir. Yeah, but there, but there were, I, I'll, I'll tell you a story. Um, there was, uh, when I initially conceived the series, I asked Alicia Keys, who's a friend of mine, to be part of the series, an artist I admire. Her mother's white, father's black, so her father's mother had to fill out the form. You know, you have to give us some information to go on. And she just told Alicia, you can't do this series. And, you know, there are people who don't want to remember that the past is too complex, too painful. There might be one little embarrassing story, but for them, it's like it looms uh, like war and peace. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it is the major thing that they don't want revealed. And I think that that's sad. I think that's sad. Yeah, I, I, I agree. There are secrets that we have. Well, I think it's interesting because... That's what Sonia just wrote. Oh, sorry, what was that? No, no, I was just reading them. Sonia said, well, there's secrets um, we have to respect. Yeah, and I think it's interesting because, I mean, I, you know, I think this one of the things that 
is so great about this series is, you know, it wouldn't work if, if you didn't kind of weave together the stories and this process of how these people are learning about themselves as well as you do. And one of the things that, you know, I mean, I think that's interesting is a lot of people, that Mike Nichols quote where he's like, how amazing to know that the story that you always thought you were making up was actually true. And I think, you know, we all in our families have these sort of mythologies that have been built up and, and those are really important to us. And so I think there's a fear sometimes of, well, what if what we learn, what if the truth somehow takes away from those stories? Um, and the two, you know, that we might lose something in that process. Yeah, because a lo it's true. And, but a lot of those stories are, well, I view those stories as in two ways. One is probably they didn't happen. But two, where there's smoke, there's fire. So what we do, we interview, every family's got a family historian. So with Meryl Streep or Stephen Colbert, you know, when I approach them, I say, who's that person? They go, oh, it's Aunt Mamie, you know. So we go and interview her, and we get all these stories. And then that's when we turn our researchers loose to see if there's a paper trail. Sometimes the story is close to the truth. Sometimes it's absolutely the case. Other times it has absolutely no bearing to anything that ever happened in human history. You know, you know, um, what's the game? Um, telephone. Right. You know, you tell me, I tell you, we tell everybody in this chat room, and by the end, you know, it's a completely different story. Well, that's the way family stories are passed along at family reunions. And no one writes them down. People say, well, the way I heard it, you know, we were all descended from George Washington and Pocahontas or something. <laughs> and that's why you have to do serious, serious genealogical, historical work to decide what was true and what was not. I wrote a few seconds ago that um, the truth of our past will set us free. I don't think that there's anything back there that we need to hide. All these people are dead. Who cares what they did? You know, if it was Jack the Ripper was your great-grandfather, so what? You know, let's let it out. Um, I think that it's better. I just think it's better than to preserve the lives of, and, and some families do, you know, and it's that lie, it, it, it's, it's not a good, it's not a healthy thing. It's not a healthy thing. It's better to know the truth. Yeah, I agree. And I think we... <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. <laughs> yeah, I think there uh, you've, got a, you've got a lot of people <laughs> there who are agreeing with you. So I'm going to let you keep um, communicating with these folks in the chat window, and I'm going to um, invite Janice now to, to show us some of the really great um, educational resources that were created, because I see there's a lot of interest here, people talking about, oh, this would be terrific to use in the classroom. And um, Janice has been spending a lot of time looking at exactly that question of how best to use the series in the classroom. So um, in, by way of introduction, Janice is an outreach producer for the lab at 13. Uh, at 13 is our uh, premier PBS station in New York City, where she develops and manages educational outreach projects associated with PBS broadcasts and conducts training sessions and workshops for teachers. Before joining 13 in 2007, Janice worked as an educator for more than 15 years, developing educational children's and family programs for communities, museums, websites, and television programs. So Janice, welcome. Uh, it's wonderful to have you here with us. And um, please, you know, show us what you got on the website. It's great stuff. Janice, are you there? Janice is uh -oh. not. She might be having audio problems. It looks oh. like she called into the telephone bridge, and I'm wondering if she used the participant code rather than the code. Do you want to unmute it? Uh, I can't, but I can have Dr. Gates do it. Well, why don't you email her? Well, actually, Dr. Yeah, what does Dr. Gates need to what, dial? What can I do? Tell you. So give me two seconds. Okay. Code. Star 97, Dr. Gates. Same. Okay. All participants have been unmuted. Janice, are you there? All right. Yay. Can you guys hear me now? I'm here. Can you we hear me? Can. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, well, thank. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. 
Excellent. Well, thank you so much. This has been <laughs> I've been liberated. <laughs> That's great. Um, this is really exciting to be part of this um, webinar. And Dr. Gates, thank you for being part of this too. This is um, one of the lucky parts of my job is I get to create educational materials related to the rich resources that Dr. Gates and others create. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually um, cr did workshops related to African American lives too, as well as looking for Lincoln and. Um, and it's been a pleasure to work on Faces of America. And basically the challenge that I'm an educator by training and the challenge that we have here at the lab, and lab is actually, it's not a lab like a physical lab, it's an acronym that stands for Life After Broadcast. And so what our job is here is to take the rich resources that we have from PBS and to think of ways to give them life beyond their life on air. So even though this airs for um, once a week for four weeks, we hope that people can use and reflect upon this and use this. We hope that you can use these in your classrooms and watch it at home for months and years to come. And so that's the goal of us at the lab is to create um, resources and, and to think of different innovative ways that you can use this beyond um, the time that it airs. So um, one of the things we've been doing lately is traveling around the country. We've been to um, nine different cities so far. Um, talking to people about Faces of America and presenting the resources. So I'm just going to briefly go over the different resources that we have available for you. But before I start, I'm just curious, um, how many of you here have used our PBS educational resources before? And you can, you can answer this question by clicking on the red check or the, um, the green check or the red X to the left of, to the, left of the screen. So if you guys. Alrighty, it seems like 49% have used our resources, 13% have not, um, and there are some people who have not responded. So a, a good amount, a number of you have used our resources. So that's that's great. We have some groupies here, which is good. Um, one, I was curious, how many of you have already attended our Faces of America teacher trainings, the live trainings we've done? Do the same thing. Click on the green check if you have, um, red X if you have not. It's a fun technology, right? <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right. It seems like most of you have not. A few of you have. Great. Um, and then just so we get a sense of what you teach, if you could just let us know if you teach elementary school, middle school, high school, college, university, or you work in some other type of educational environment. What if it's all of the above? All of the above. You can write that in the chat room. If, if, if you don't fit a specific category, you can let us know in the chat specifically. Homeschool, great. Wow, we have a great, this is, this is wonderful, a great range of elementary, middle, high school, college, other. And if you're other, feel free to let us know in the chat what the other means. It's great to get a good sense. So this is good to see that we have a good range here. And I'm just going to give you um, just a quick overview of the resources. So what I'm going to do now is, if you can see here on the screen, we have our website, um, which has lesson plans, video clips, and I'm going to show you that right now. We also have a great multimedia guide that's um, coming off the presses soon. And if you guys would like a copy of that, it's going to have activity ideas, and it also has DVD, a DVD with video highlights from the series. Feel free to email guide request at 13.org, and we can send you a multimedia guide. Also, we have some wonderful color posters, and you can also request those from the guide request at 13.org while supplies last. So feel free to do that. Um, now I'm going to take you to the website. And I'm just going to walk you quickly through um, the site and the resources we have. So like when Jenny was showing you the site before, feel free to stretch the window open more. I know sometimes it comes up as a scrunched screen. Um, and as you can see, this is, this is the home page. And if you scroll down um, using the bar on the right, you can see the 12 guests featured in the series. And if you click on their images, you'll see profiles about them and have access to clips about each guest. But what I'm going to take you to now, at the top of the screen, if we click on video, 
This is a great resource where we have different video clips, some featured in the show, some that were left on the cutting room floor. And I encourage you to come watch these after the webinar. And one wonderful thing about this is that after each episode, the day after, we release the full episode online. You can watch them in streaming versions. So right now we have episodes one and two. And if you come back Thursday, we'll have episode three since our, the episodes air every Wednesday. Um, and so you can watch those entire episodes one and two right now if you haven't gotten to see them already. And if you scroll down, you'll see different clips um, from different celebrities. And you can see at the bottom there's a link to go to more pages where you can see more videos. And I've nice. been spending spending a lot of time. Oops, I think we lost the website. <laughs> um, anyway, I've been spending a lot of time exploring that, and I encourage you guys to do that as well. Do you guys? No, see somebody the closed it. And Dr. Gates, you oh, might have no, done that accidentally. If any of the moderators, if you close that window, it closes. Oh, okay. I closed it. <laughs> yeah, I. Closed. I'm sorry. All right, I'll go back on. This is now, how do you, yeah, open it again. Oh, there it I'm, is. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it right now. This is no problem. Right, I'm going I'm to close it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I'm actually going to show one feature. <laughs> I'm just clicking on the blog feature right now. And this is a great um, resource which is being updated very regularly. And it includes, if you scroll down, you'll see it has different um, information from Dr. Gates about the inspiration of doing this, this series. It also has different appearances and different seminars that have been conducted related to the show. It has Dr. Gates' appearance on the Colbert Report. Um, so feel free to take a look at this. It's kind of fun, and, and it, it is yeah, evolving. That is not me. That's Bill Grant. Right, Isn't but if you scroll down, there's one of you um, uh, appearing on the Colbert Report. And keep but scrolling down, and there's more information. Bill Grant doing <laughs> passing is me. That's what <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're <laughs> making sure people are paying attention, right? <laughs> not me, anybody. <laughs> yeah, that's actually from a really interesting forum that was at WGBH, and I would encourage you guys to take a look at that. And yeah, it includes Bill Grant and some others discussing. And Steve that. Ives, one of my producers. Yeah, discussing the series. Bill um, Grant, good man. Yeah, the next thing I just wanted to walk you through is the profile section. So I'm going to click on profiles at the top of the screen. I'm afraid and to touch my computer. The whole thing will disappear. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you'll see here um, we have all the celebrities listed. And I'm going to click on Elizabeth Alexander. And it's the same format for all of these. Once you click on their name, you can see a brief biography about the person as well as different video clips. Um, some, like I said before, that were featured on the show and some that were left on the cutting room floor. I always like watching those that were left on the cutting room floor. And then the meat and potatoes, I think, of this site is the For Educators section. And I would encourage you to explore that. We have four different lessons. Um, and if you scroll down, you can see all four of them. The one at the top, I actually wrote this one. It's called Exploring the Past. It's for early elementary school kids. And it focuses on using primary sources. Um, and it includes all of our lessons, just like other PBS lessons, include video components, online components, as well as hands-on activities. And even though we've targeted each lesson for different levels, we encourage you, even if you're a high school teacher, take a look at the elementary lesson. I'm sure there are bits and pieces of it that you can pull out and adapt for your educational purposes. Um, also, uh, the next lesson, They're Coming to America, focuses on immigration, and it's geared for upper elementary. Um, a third lesson you see here, a cold reception, focuses on anti-immigration sentiment. And then the final lesson, um, I Dream of Genome, brilliant, <laughs> um, brilliant. is our high, school, our high school lesson. And I'm just going to click on the Exploring the Past lesson just to show you the format of each of these lessons. And um, as you can see, if you scroll down this page, at the top it says click here where you can get a print that printer-friendly version of the lesson. And then you scroll down, it has the, the grade, the the amount of time that we estimate, a brief overview, the less learning objectives, as well as the state related standards. All of our lessons are standards based. And um, it lists all the media components that you need for the lesson. And all our video segments are featured on this site, and I'll show you in just a minute. A link to all the websites used in the lesson, materials needed, and specific instructions on prep needed. And then if you see at the bottom, scroll down, you'll see proceed to learning activities. and if you scroll down on this page, you'll see um, basically a step-by-step -step, uh, approach to the lesson. And it's pretty much like a recipe book. Feel free to use the, the script as needed, as listed, or feel free to adapt and add your own ingredients to spice up the lesson. But it's just kind of a template to help you um, do the lesson. 
And if you scroll down, then you can go to uh, video segments. Um, and basically what we've done for all these lessons is we've chosen really small clips, usually ranging in, in time from three to six minutes. And then we have discussions and activities uh, that revolve around the clips. And what I want to do is I want to show you one of our clips. And I'm going to go back to our um, hi, uh, I Dream of Genome lesson, the high school lesson. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to take you to the video segments from this. And if you see, another way to access the parts of it is scroll over to the right, if everyone could do that. You can see that there's a little menu. It says lesson overview, lesson activities, and video segments. And right now, I want everyone, we're going to click on video segments. I'm going to take you there. And as soon as we get there, I want you to press the pause button underneath the video, because I think your video is going to start automatically. Um, so just click on the pause button. And what I want you to do is scroll down under the video and go to A Piece of the Pie, Chapter 4. And this is one of my favorite clips where um, all the different guests discover their, um, what we call their, their pie charts and their ethnic identities. So I'd like you to click on that and we'll all watch this clip together. We did find in your genome you have an interesting variant that's associated with uh, glucose galactose approaching and severely lactose itself. You had variants in genes that are known to be and play a role in testicular development. <laughs> That's true. Just a reminder, we're looking at chapter four, a piece of the pie. My great great grandmother Jane Gates was a slave. We know a little about her. But she was a nurse and a midwife. And then her five children were fathered by a white man. But we don't know anything about him, not even his name. Jane took the secret of his identity to her grave. And to this day, my great-great-grandfather remains a mystery to me. The story is the same for a lot of us. Most African Americans have a white ancestor somewhere in their family tree. But for most of us, their identity remains unknown. Once in a while, though, one of us gets lucky. Historical records unveil something more. And in the case of the poet Elizabeth Alexander, a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. I've never met an African American, I've never done the family tree of an African American who had a longer family history that was documented. Documented by paper. Could you read the names of your ancestors? Sir William Mallory, 13th great grandparent. Thirteenth great grandparents. Could you read this? Joan, Princess of England. <laughs> Joan, Princess of England, who was? Twenty third great grandparent. Elizabeth, could you read the name of the top? John Lachlan, King of England. King John the First Elizabeth. This is twenty fourth <laughs> great grandparent. <laughs> you are descended from the King of England. King John the First. Directly descended. To your mother's line. And Clement, mistress of the king, to 24th great grandmother. Basically, scientists believe that the ancestry of every person alive today can be traced back to East Africa. There, nearly 200,000 years ago, human beings evolved. For the next 150,000 years or so, these early humans remained within the confines of Africa. The <laughs> half group is called L0A, a subgroup of the most ancient half group, L3. Of all, which arose about 150,000 years ago in Africa. Eventually, about 50,000 years ago, a few of these people decided it was time to We wanted to know if our guests were Over the many of its followers, Your half of the arose soon after 
Janice, I think maybe we should um, stop the clip since some folks were having difficulty with it. Great. So, yeah, and I think some people were listening to different clips, but that's fine. I, we just wanted to give you a, like a little example of the types of clips that we have on the site. And the wonderful thing about the, the um, clips and the lesson plans is they are all downloadable. So you can download all of them. In each of the lessons, we have at least about an average of three clips per lesson. So like I was saying before, even if you're a high school teacher, feel free to look at the elementary lesson. If you're an elementary school lesson, elementary school teacher, feel free to look at the high school lesson because I'm sure you'll get ideas just from seeing the clips we have. And, and I know from working in a lot of schools that a lot of times the technology is not that dependable. So you know, if you don't have a live internet connection, you know, we encourage you to download the, the clips ahead of time and you can show them in your class that way. Um, so basically those are the different resources we have available for you. If anyone has any questions or if you'd like to, you know, contact me, have any questions about the lessons, feel free to do so. I'm happy to answer your questions and I'll be around till the end of the webinar and can answer your questions in, in the chat room. Um, does anyone have I, any questions at this time? I have a comment uh, for both uh, you and, and Dr. Gates. Uh, I happen to be a professional storyteller and I work as a, a resident storyteller specifically telling stories, historical narratives about African Americans in early Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. But I also won a contest sponsored by, I think it was the Philadelphia Tribune and WHYY, to be one of these, or the, the regular families that uh, traced their DNA. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, and uh, the, the test results, results weren't all that remarkable. I guess um, for my mother's side of the family, um, but I gave the test to my uncle also, and it came back. Um, and I'm African American, by the way. Uh -huh. um, the test came back Scottish, English, and Irish mm -hmm. uh, descent for my uncle's side. And oh, that's right, it. Well, you know that if if we did the DNA of all the black men in the NBA, the National Basketball Association. 33%, 3.3 out of 10, would trace their paternal ancestry, their father's father's line, to Europe. That's amazing. 58% of the African-American people have at least 12.5% European ancestry, which is the equivalent of one great-grandparent. Only 5% of the African-American people have 12.5% Indian ancestry. Isn't that interesting? Though yeah. most African Americans, as you know, claim to have Native American ancestry. Almost none do. But almost all of them have some kind of European ancestry because of slavery. So we're all, no matter what the law was in the daytime, when the lights came down, everybody was getting down with everybody else. Now, under slavery, it wasn't healthy relationships, obviously. But when I show Stephen Colbert, who is super Irish patriot and Roman Catholic, very devout, that the oldest ancestor that we could trace in his line was Hans Diebold Liederman from the Rhineland, <laughs> 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 it just shows that 
every the, the quickest way to get people to sleep together is to tell them they can't. And you create this desire, and then you know people just do it. That's just the way it is. <laughs> I also have a question for Janice. Yes, I'd, I'd like to know. Uh, my dilemma is making this technology more available to uh, all the schools that I am um, resident are inner city schools, uh, mm-hmm. disadvantaged uh, neighborhoods, and they don't have. They're lucky if they have one computer that works. Yeah. In a school. Yeah. What What can I do to make this more accessible to? Well, that's children? a really great question, and you know, I'd be happy to con- continue offline with you too. But um, basically, we have the um, new multimedia guide that's coming out, and I would definitely recommend ordering that. That's a print guide which has different activities that you can use. We have the posters that you can order, um, which also are you can hang up in the classroom. And then um, if you have access to a computer, you could print out some of the materials from here and distribute them that way because we do have printable versions of all the lessons that we have on the website. Um, yeah, and then like I said, if you do have one computer and can use the DVD, we have the, the DVD that's coming with the multimedia guide as well as these downloadable clips that we have here. Okay, and I can order the, the down, I mean I can just go online and download the guide. Yeah, and the multimedia guide, I'm going to go back to this slide oops, that we had before, and it has, um, oh, right here. Um, you can see that if you go to guide request at 13.org, you can order our multimedia guide, okay. and we can send you those. And that is a great printed resource, and it has a list of resources on the back where you can trace your family history and information about genealogy, as well as different activities to do, and there's a DVD in there. Thank you. Thank okay, you so much. I'm going to jump in here because I see we are reaching the end of the hour. Okay, gang. Um, thank you so much, Janice and Dr. Gates, for, for joining us. Um, I hope everyone has um, learned a lot and is um, intrigued to go and learn more by visiting the website and watching the film in its entirety. Um, it's been a real, real honor to have you with us tonight. Um, and I, I think this is a terrific series. I can't wait to see um, what's coming next from you, which I, I know you have more exciting things in the pipeline. Um, I want to just um, answer a question <laughs> someone asked about um, getting a certificate for tonight's event. We do give certificates. There's going to be a survey that launches at the end of this webinar. And if you want to get a certificate of attendance, please fill out that survey. Uh, just quickly, we have a bunch of upcoming webinars. We have one on March 10th about copyright and fair use in uh, the art world in the classroom. On March 16th, we have one celebrating women in science with Dr. Mae Jemison. And on March 25th, we have one about the Buddha, an, an upcoming film, and teaching mindfulness. So we hope you'll join us for all of those. Oops, we jumped ahead. Uh, we hope you'll visit PBS Teachers where you can access the lesson plans that you were told about tonight and thousands of others associated with PBS programs and join our online community to keep the conversation going. We hope you'll enter our Innovation Awards and show us how you are using media and technology and um, great ideas to inspire your students. And uh, Steve, our, my co-moderator, is the creator of Classroom 2.0, a very vibrant online community for educators interested in using collaborative technologies and learning. So we hope you'll join that community as well. We want to thank Illuminate, our host for tonight's event. Jenny, can I add one? For making oh. it this possible. And uh, last but not least, I want to let folks know that um, the, all of the um, tonight's event will be recorded and archived on both the PBS Teachers and Classroom 2.0 sites. So um, please jump in, Janice, and um, any any final comments are welcome. Oh, I just wanted to add one. I just wanted to add one other thing that I didn't mention when I was going through. We have a lot of handouts on the in the lessons, and those are all downloadable from the site as well. So we have a lot of printable material in addition um, to the printout lessons. We have like printed activity sheets that you can download on the site that I showed you. So feel free to explore those. As Great. Well. Thank you. Okay, gang. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I'm Thank out of here. So much. It was a pleasure. See you next <laughs> film. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bless you. Bye bye. Hello. 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 Uh, yeah. Oh, hello. Hi. Am I supposed to be hanging around to get further? <laughs> nope. You can hang up. 
information. I'm sorry, Denise. Nope. Denise. If you yeah. want to get a letter of confirming your attendance, you should uh, fill out the survey. Steve, have you launched the survey yet? It launches as soon as oh, you leave the session. Oh, it launches as soon as you close the window. That's right. So as soon as you all leave um, this room, the survey will be launched for you. And if you want to re um, receive a certificate of attendance, just go ahead and fill out that survey, and, and we'll send it out to you as soon as possible. Thanks, everyone, so much for joining Thank us tonight. Much. Um, good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thanks.